I love to praise his holy name. Amen. Amen. We thank God that we're able to do the things that God has called us to do. Amen. Thank you for that selection. I love to praise his holy name. Did you all come to have church today? Amen. Did God do something throughout the week that you want to give him praise for today? Amen. Amen. Well, if he didn't do anything throughout the week, he did something this morning for you. Amen. By looking at your face, he woke you up this morning. So he did something for you, so you ought to be able to praise his holy name. Amen. We welcome each and every one of you this morning uh, in the name of Jesus, because there is no other name but Jesus that we give honor and glory to. And the Bible says that you can't call on the name of Jesus. Something is wrong with you. And Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. If you go to God, you got to come through me. You can talk about God all day long, but if you ain't going through Jesus Christ, because he said you can't get to God unless you go through me. So if that's the truth, then we ought to be calling on the name of Jesus right now because we know what Jesus did on Calvary's cross. We have proof this morning that he did something for us. Amen. Amen and amen. I, I want to welcome those who may be watching uh, via internet later on. Uh, but for those of, who, those of us who are here this morning, we just want to thank God that we made it just one more day. As my good friend and brother always say, we just one more day on this side of Jordan. And any day above the ground is a good day. Amen. I will uh, call the worship this morning. It's coming from Psalm 139, 1 through Six. Oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Sisters and brothers, sisters and brothers, praise the Lord. Amen. 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 This time we will have a selection. From our choir. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen.
If you pray right, if you treat your neighbors right, if you treat your family right, your friends right, heaven belongs to you. Even if you treat the officers that pull you over and give a ticket to you, if you treat them right, heaven belongs to you. I know what you're talking about, my sister, because three, maybe four years ago, I was rushing to get to church, and I had it in the wind, I have to admit. I came through this one community and saw the state trooper, and I, I let up on it, but I saw those red lights go on, and I knew he had me, so I know what it's like. I know what it feels like trying to get to church. Not so much that you're going to be late, but you just want to get to church something like that, the devil comes, and yes, part of it was your fault for speeding or doing something that you shouldn't do, but still, the devil want to discourage you. And you know, when I read John 10, 10, and when it says the devil wants to kill, steal, and destroy, I don't stop there, because there's a little more in that that says, Jesus said, but I am. I'm the one who can save and I'm the one who can deliver you because I am the light. So even though he, the devil's doing what he's doing because he knows his days are coming to an end. He's numbering his days. 
And we need to get on our job and do what we need to do. We need to stay in the word of God. Read the word of God. Digest the word of God. Read it again. Digest it. Read it. And keep reading it and praying and asking God. God's the only one that can give you the discernment of his word. If you, if you trust in anything, anybody other than God to, and Jesus to help you understand this word, you're in a world of trouble. Because Jesus says, ask and it shall be given. I don't care what you find yourself going through, and many of us go through many things all day long, every day of the week. But Jesus says, I am the way, and I just have to believe that. I have nothing else to depend on but Jesus. And so when Jesus says those words, I take those things to my heart. And we all should. Because he is the way. He is the truth. And so whenever I find myself in trouble, whenever I find myself hurting, whenever I find myself in any situation, I know I can go to the rock. Jesus is my rock. And I know what my rock can do because he is steadfast. He's un unmovable. And he is my God. Amen and amen. We, we come to the point of our service where it's a call to confession where we can sort of name what we've done. Some things we've done, we don't even know what they are. But it's a time that we can reflect on the things that God can do for us. And, and we can ask God to remove some things. We can ask God to build up some things in our life and just like when David said, if I go to hell and make my bed in hell, God, you're there. You can get me out of those hellish situations. But all I have to do is call on the name of Jesus. This is praise and worship time, people. This is a time we praise God and worship him and give him everything that we think we know is in our heart. Give it to God. He said, bring all your burdens to me and I in no way will take care of those burdens so we thank God for his burden so come with me all of you right now to this confession time as we meditate on the word of God and, and for our, our burdens our earthly burdens our heavenly burdens whatever burden you find yourself in and, and God will in no wise give you rest amen he says take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your soul so let's go to God right now let's see if we can't find some kind of rest for our soul because he is our pillow he is our fetter we can go to God and we can rest on the assurance that God can take care of every and anything that we have going on amen our burdens are light in the sight of God. They may seem heavy for you, but God says they light. They're lightweight. Join me now in silent prayer. Let us pray. Almighty creator, the giver of life, the one who from the beginning thought everything into existence, you are our great creator. You know us better than we know ourselves. You know all about us, God. You know our thoughts. You know our weaknesses, our motivations, our sins. And you still love us. Lord, I stand right now asking you to forgive us, forgive me when we don't believe such love is true or possible, when we wonder how you could love us just as we are. And that's many times what the Bible said. He says, come as you are. And we misquote that scripture sometimes. We think that we can just go to God any old way but God said I want you to come in your sickness I want you to come to me in your hurt we always say well it doesn't matter what you wear but yes it does God said if you can do better be better 
Don't just come in your way. But when you're hurting, when you're going through trials and tribulations, God says, bring them to me just the way you are because you can't fix those things. But I can fix those things. I am a mind regulator. I'm a heart fixer. I can do all those things for you. So bring them all and lay them down at the feet of Jesus. And when we forget that we are fearful, wonderfully made in your image, God, remind us. Remind us that you created us. You took time to create each and every one of us in your image. Remove from our minds every thought, every doubt that keeps us from you, God. Break down the walls that divide us from you. Push us aside. Push aside the pride that we have. Push aside the jealousy, the racism that we have. Push aside everything that's not pleasing in your sight, God. That we might come to you as pure as the white snow. Put aside those things, Father God, that isolate us from you. And Lord, most of all, help us. Help us to trust in your spirit anew. We ask this in the precious and glorious, magnificent name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This time we have a selection by the choir. Okay. Tears be to get on. Ship of Zion, tis the old ship of Zion, tis the old ship of Zion, tis the old. Thank you. 
see me close my eyes sometimes that's a melody but that's me talking to God I may not move my lips I may not raise my hand but trust me my focus is on God and I've been going through something as y'all know my mother's been very sick in a hospital in Pikeville Kentucky I've had medical symptoms but she came home with a hospital bed but that's okay and a shower chair, and a back brace. I don't know what kind of equipment they gave her, but she's doing better. Her strength is increased, and she's eating, so we praise God for that. Pastor looked at me and said, one more. I didn't bring my book. <laughs> but that's all right. This is what's on my heart. got me too. I'll be squeaking now. <laughs> I'll be all right. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. After Oh, there is, I'll be all right, I'll be all right, I'll be all right, I'll be all right, after a while. Oh, every day. 
said every, 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 every day will be like Sunday. Amen, amen, and amen. Let us bow our heads. All eyes closed, every head bow. Father God, we come this morning to hear a word from you. So God, will you set the captive free and will you speak to our hearts and allow us to concentrate on you? God, we're glad to be in this place. We glorify you and we worship you and we praise your name for your standing power. Thank you for keeping us standing and when the storm is over, we're still standing. Now, Father God, just breathe on our worship, oh God. Show yourself strong on our behalf. Stretch out your hand of mercy. Have your way in this place and speak to our hearts. Speak to our heads. Speak to our spirit that we may give you praise now for your glory, God. All the honor and all the power belongs to you. It is in Jesus' name we do pray. And all those who love God said amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Open your Bibles with me this morning, if you don't mind navigating with me to John, uh, the third gospel. John, the 12th chapter. I begin our reading at verse number 1, John 12. Beginning with verse number 1. Amen. John, the gospel recorded by John. Everybody got it? Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let us begin reading with verse number one. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus has ra had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha stood while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a, a pint of pure nard and expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Iscariot, who was later be, who would later betray him, objected. He said, Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief, a keeper of the money bag. He used to reach in the bag every now and then and help himself out. And Jesus says, leave her alone. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you. But you will not always have me. 
Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came not, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus when he had raised, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. Because on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in Jesus. Amen. Praise God for the reading of his holy word. The grass withers and the flower fades. But the word of our God shall stand forever. Do the best you can with what you have where you are. I'm kind of enjoying this series. Amen. Do the best you can with what you have where you are. A theologian, preacher, campus preacher by the name of Tony Campolo, he authored a marvelous little book entitled, Who Switched the Price, Price Tag? And the thesis of that book, uh, he, tells the and he tells the story of a thief who broke into a department store. He didn't steal anything. He spent all night switching price tags. Items that were $900, he put a price tag on it for $90. Items that cost $600, he put a price tag of $60. All night long, he went throughout the store switching tags. Items that were extravagant and costly, he put price tags on them that were a mere penance. And the next morning when the department store opened for business, they went four hours doing business before anyone recognized that the price tags had been switched. Satan has done that in this world in which we live. That we have made things that are, that are in estimable value cheap. While things that are cheap and worth nothing, we estimate them with great value. It makes no sense to me to spend $2 million on a wedding that's going to last six months. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me to spend $25,000 on a hotel room. It doesn't make sense to, for me to spend $450,000 on a car when all you're going to do is drive in it. That's extravagant. That's over the top for me. A few years ago, I remember after preaching in a revival, I preached for a week. And I come to notice that some, sometimes the price is not more uh, than value. I was, I was at a restaurant eating a nice meal, and uh, I was sitting there by myself, and a waiter who should have been, shouldn't have been looking at the customer the way she was looking at the customer, she kept smiling at me. I started smiling at her. She kept asking me if I wanted water, and my glass was already full. If I wanted some more tea, and I've already had the tea sweetened the way I want it to be sweetened, I didn't want any more tea. I didn't want it, and, 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 and she looked at me, and I, and I, I got the tea I wanted the way I wanted to, and she, I guess she was just admiring my frame, for I, I looked a little different back then than I look right now. And she said, I recognize you. Our church had a revival, and we, I got the tape of that that revival, and I, I was watching that revival, uh, and, and I saw you on that tape and that you were at our church, and she said to me, uh, you look more handsome in person than you do on the tape. That's what I said. <laughs> My chest started bowing out, you know, okay. And I got to thinking, and the Holy Spirit said to me, and he said, and I said, honey, let's start shucking the corn cob. 
<laughs> I said, I don't take no high blood, blood pressure medicine, and I ain't trying to get on no high blood pressure medicine. <laughs> and, and we can't get together because that paycheck I'm getting from that church is mighty good to me, and I can't afford to lose that income over some foolish stuff by having some kind of affair with you. And that's what Satan has been doing with some of us. Satan has been having an affair with us because he told us we look good. We do this and do that. And, and Satan has been making a fool out of some of us. Don't let, the, don't let Satan destroy your ministry. Don't let Satan destroy your life. You keep on walking hand in hand with God. God is too powerful. God is too important to me for me to lose his, his, his trust over cheap thrills. Some things are expensive that we call cheap and common and things that are cheap and common, we make them more expensive than God intends. But when it comes to worship, when it comes to worshiping Jesus Christ, no cost is too extravagant. Walk with me around the text if you don't mind. We meet Mary three times. Three times we meet her. We meet Mary for the third time here in chapter 12 of, of, of John's gospel. We meet Mary for the third time dining with Jesus. The first time we meet Mary, she is at the feet of Jesus learning all she can about this man named Jesus. She's learning his word. And you, you remember he was in the home of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And Martha is in the kitchen serving while Mary is at the feet of Jesus worshiping. Jesus said, uh, uh, Jesus, she's at the feet of Jesus and she's just learning the word of God. And the second time we meet Mary is in chapter number 11 of John's gospel where Jesus has raised Lazarus from the dead. And Mary comes again to the feet of Jesus. This time, she's not there to learn his word, but she's there to experience his works. And she said to him, what Martha said to him, if you had been here, my brother Lazarus would not have died. And Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. Now in chapter 12, they are at the supper given in Jesus' honor. Jesus is reclining at the table. And, and the Bible says that Lazarus is also there reclining, also whom he has raised from the dead. And here, this time, we meet Mary. She is not at the feet of Jesus learning <coughs> his word. She's not at the feet of Jesus experiencing his work, but she's at the feet of Jesus expressing his word because the bible says that she breaks open an expensive bottle of perfume pours it on jesus's feet wipes his feet with her hair here's mary doing what mary always doing she's at the feet and and and, and she's at the feet of Jesus this time, my brothers and sisters, with an expensive bottle of perfume. So expensive. The Bible says that it costs a year's wages, which is back in those days in the Neria form was $80,000. She's pouring $80,000 worth of perfume on the feet of Jesus. The jar, the seal had never been broken on this bottle because it is a family jewel. It's a heirloom. It's, an exp it's so expensive that it, it's hardly ever been touched. But Mary goes, get it, breaks it open, and the Bible says it, the fragrance fills the entire room, the house. Extravagant for Jesus because that's what worship is. It's extravagant. It's over the top. Worship is extravagant. Worship, when it is real, is over the top. It's out of bounds. No bar holes. It breaks the rules. It disregards tradition. It jumps outside of custom. It's over the top. It's more. It's extravagant. It's expensive. It's costly. It's over and above what some people think should be necessary. You can't hardly get much out of people 
who are not indebted to Jesus. Because we live in a culture of entitlement. Talk back to me if you can. We live in an entitlement culture where everybody thinks you owe them something. And we come to church with an entitlement mentality that God owes us that he woke us up this morning. Mm -hmm. God owes us to give us health and strength. God owes us to take care of our children. God owes us to bless us. But I want to correct your theology this morning. Because when you come to church, this is not an entitlement situation. It's an indebtedness situation because everybody in here owes God a debt that we cannot pay. How much do I owe him? How can I say thanks? I, I, I wish I had a witness in here with me this morning. Uh, how can I bless God for the blessings that he's already given me that I'm not entitled to? I'm looking at you. Yes, I'm looking at you this morning with your entitlement, believing self this morning, thinking you're entitled to everything. Listen, Judas, Judas is, is, is scariotism is still alive even today in the church. I said Judas' charitism is alive at the church because Judas said that that's a waste. That's too much. And somebody in this church this morning who is afflicted with charitism believes that, that what we do, some of us, is too much. When you praise God with everything you have, when the Holy Spirit makes you jump and makes you leap and makes you run, some people think that's too much. They'll tell you, don't take all that. Be quiet. Sit down somewhere. You're cutting up too much. You're, you're making too much noise. Listen, you can't get too much out of people who don't feel that they're not indebted. But, the, but for those of us, who know we owe a debt that we cannot pay because he paid a debt we, can, we didn't owe. We don't, need a, we don't need a praise team to help us out. We don't need a choir director. We don't need a preacher in a pulpit. We can be at home sitting in the den. We can be in a car sitting at a traffic light. We can be in the house watching television when we start thinking about where God has brought us from. I owe God a hallelujah. Uh, you've heard me before. You've heard me uh, say this before, and it's, it's very applicable for this message. I, I, I often tell you, I've, I've said this, he said, I said, praise is the rent you pay for blessings you already enjoy. Let me say that one more time. I said, praise is the rent you pay for the blessings that you already enjoy. And looking at some of you, you are in rear of your rent payment. God kept you all night long. You haven't said thank you yet. God opened a door for you. That somebody else closed and you still haven't said anything yet. God made your enemies leave you alone. God kept you on your job when everybody else was being laid off. And then when you lost your job, you never missed a meal. You never lost your car. You never lost your home. God has been good to you. You're behind in your rent payment. So now will be a good time to catch up. Uh, thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What I have, God, you gave it to me. Uh, where I am, you brought me. What I know, woo, you taught me. Uh, you made a way out of no way. And I'm here because of you, God. I didn't nobody put me here but you, God. Can't nobody take me away but you, God. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, you made a way. And I'm not going to let anybody at this church or any church I go to 
outshout me. You better move. You better go sit down somewhere. You better find you another pew. You better get another section because I got a hallelujah inside of me. I got to thank you, Jesus, because I owe God a thanks. Let me talk to somebody. Let me talk to somebody uh, that, that God has forgiven of a lot of sins now. Uh, come on, talk back to me in here. Uh, you, you, you got some stuff in your past right now that you're ashamed to talk about. You got some issues going on right now that you ought to crawl your way out of this sanctuary. But grace, mercy, forgiveness, the steadfast of the Lord, he never ceases. His mercy never comes to an end. They are new every morning. Great. Hallelujah. Great is thy faithfulness. Even when I'm unfaithful, God is faithful. Mary, Mary, Mary takes that bottle. Of expensive perfume because worship, number one, when it is real, is expensive. Worship, when it is real, is expensive. You, you, you don't know the price of my praise. You, you, you can't put a dollar value on my hallelujah. You, you don't know what it costs me to have the kind of faith that I have. I wish I had some noise in here. You don't know how many times I've been broke. You don't know how many times I've lost my way. You don't know how many tears I've had to shed. You don't know how many burdens I've had to carry. You don't know how many scars that's on the inside of this road. You don't know. You don't know what I've got going on underneath what I'm wearing. Don't try to tell me how to praise God. You don't know what it costs me. To be in this sanctuary. My praise sometimes may seem over the top. It may seem extravagant. But you don't know what God has done for me. God has been extravagant in, in how he has blessed me. I wish I had a witness in here. God, God has been, been, been going overboard to show me how much he loves me. When I could not love myself, God stepped in and he showed me how he could love me. I could have lost my mind. But God said, no, 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 not today because I love you too much. No, no. Ah. Uh, he clothed me in my right mind. I should have been dead somewhere, sleeping in my grave. But God said, oh, no, not the cooling board this time. I got work for you to do. And so get up and do your work. Oh, when, 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 when Mary, when Mary broke open that bottle, she dismissed several customs and traditions because real Genuine worship, real extravagant worship pays no attention to tradition and customs. When she broke open that bottle, she broke away from tradition. And in that Jew Jewish custom during that time, uh, when, when an important guest was invited to, uh, to dine in, in, in your home, he would drink from a glass and after he finished drinking, he would break that glass. And the importance, the importance of that is that no one else can ever drink from that glass. And so when a person dies, expensive myrrh is issued from a bottle, from a glass, to anoint them for burial. And then the glass is broken and put in the coffin to signify how much the deceased was loved by the ones who cared for his remains. That's what Mary did. When she broke open that perfume, nobody would be able to ever use that perfume again. The fragrance can be smelled this morning. That was over 2,000 years ago, saints of God. And I still smell it this morning. 
Every time someone says thank you, I smell it. Every time someone lifts their hand and say hallelujah, I smell it. You're going to help me preach this, won't you? And listen, that is the only time Jesus says, leave, let her alone. Leave her alone. There were times when they were trying to make him king and he, he slipped out of their midst. There was times when they were trying to anoint him and, and hurled him up and he would vanish out of their sight. But this time, he says, Sister Libby, leave her alone. Judah says, we could have sold the perfume and given the money to the poor. And he said this is not because, he said it's not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And he wanted that money out of the bag. And you, you, you watch people who try to stifle and smother what God is doing in your life. Watch, just watch them. They are envious of your blessings. They envious of your blessings. And, and you have, you have heard, heard me tell you before that folk who are envious of you, they don't want what you have. They just don't want you to have it. And they would do anything in their little bitty power to smother what God is up to in your life. Don't let anybody bury your light of your potential under a bushel of their expectations of you. I'm, I'm not what you call me. No, no. Uh -uh. Your estimation of me does not define my worth. I know. I know. I know who I am. I'm comfortable in my skin. I know how God has been to me, how good God has been to me. I know how many sins God has forgiven me of. I know God should have cut me off a long time ago. But God, he looked beyond my faults. And he saw all my needs. And since his blessings are over the top, my shout is over the top. Her praise, her worship was expensive. But not only was it expensive as I hurry along, it was also expressive. Praise, I said, when it is real. It's not quiet. Mm -hmm, you can say all you want to. Praise when it's real. It ain't quiet. Worship when it, is, when it is for true, when it's no kidding for real authentic praise, it is not quiet. You know why I know that? Because the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. Wherever there is a joyful noise unto the Lord, he's right there in it. And, and people who have been forgiven a much, have learned to love much. And when you love much, you got to express your praise. Because love, Sister K, when it is real, it expresses itself. I wish I had somebody to help me preach. A man does not love you, girl. If he doesn't show you he loves you, your light's been turned off. You talking about, he talking about he loves you. He never brings you gifts, flowers, cars, and he tells you he loves you. To prove his love to you, uh, that's not love if he don't bring you those things, if he don't try to help you out. All that is is a cheap imitation of love or infatuation of love love when it is real lay down its life in expression for the one that he loves I wish I had a witness right there Mary Mary had been forgiven 
and, and because Christ had washed her sins away, she came and laid at his feet, poured perfume on his feet, and here is her expression. She let down her hair. And she began to wipe his feet with her hair. Now, that, you got to understand how important that is because in those days, the women didn't let their hair down. They wore their hair up under something. So that was an expression of love. But worship, when it is real, is letting your hair down kind of situation. Now, now here's what letting your hair down means. Letting your hair down means you don't care what you have on. You don't care who you're sitting next to. You don't care how much you pay for those clothes, how, how, how much time it took you to put your makeup on. God's been good to me. God opened up a door for me. I'm where I am because I'm not because, not because of some man. I'm where I am not because of some woman. I'm here because God loved me. I'm not here because of no job. Not because of the street I live on, but God just been good to me. Where I come from, I could have been in jail. All that stuff I did that I didn't get caught for, I could have been dead right now. But God been good to me. I said, God's been good to me. And so I got to express my love of God in this sanctuary this morning. I feel it right now. I feel something right now tugging at me. I, I feel it. I feel it. I know who you are. You're going through something right now. You said something to somebody that you shouldn't have said. And God let you know right now, I love you. All you have to do is ask for forgiveness. Now, that, that, that brothers, that, that, that bothers some people right now. I told you, Judas... Iscariotism is still alive in the church. You take care of it. You really, you really, when you really come to worship, take care of who you sit by when you come to worship, because not everybody has your level of enthusiasm. But I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I intended when I got up this morning. To give God some praise. When I was writing this little message last night when I got home to preach it this morning, I intended to get happy right through here because God has been good to me and, and I'm going to express myself. I'm going to get my mind my, my right now right through here because I've got something to be grateful for. I've got something to be thankful for because God has been good to me. I said, God's been good to me. I got something to, to shout about this morning. I got something to make a little noise about this morning. Now, if you don't have anything to praise God for, I feel sorry for you. Sit right there. Keep your mouth closed. I ain't mad with you, but if God's been good to you, if God's been your provider, if God's been your protection, if God has opened up doors for you that was closed in your face, if God has made a way out of no way, don't let anybody intimidate you. Don't let anybody look funny at you. Tell them to go sit somewhere else. Find another section to get in because I've got too much to thank God for. He brought me church from a mighty long way. He brought me over hills and valleys. He brought me here right now. He made ways out of no ways for me. And I intend right through here to tell God thank you for what he's done for me. Thank you for my mother. Thank you for my father. Thank you for my old pastor. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the house that I sleep in. Thank you for the car I drive. Thank you for the money in my pocket. Thank you for raising my friends in my life. Thank you for my brothers and my sisters. Thank you for my friends and my family. 
Thank you for my church and my pastor. Thank you for the house of God. I could have been dead, sleeping in my grave, but you've been so good to me. So I'm going to express myself in how I give God praise. Now, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you express yourself, but you ought to express yourself. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If the Lord opens doors for you, he want to say so. If the Lord has been good to you, he want to say so. If the Lord whoo, has been losing your mind, you want to say so. If the Lord protected your children, you want to say so. If the Lord brought you out, you want to say so. If the Lord kept you out of trouble, you want to say so. If the Lord picked you up, turned you around, you want to say so. Why don't you grab somebody? Grab somebody by the hand right now and tell them you don't know the price of my praise. You're looking at me, but you really, really, really don't know how much it costs me to be where I am. Look at somebody and tell them I don't look like what I've been through. I don't look like what I've been through. God has, God has, God has been good to me. I've got one more thing. I've got one more thing. They came to the house not just to see Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, who was raised from the dead. And the Bible said they didn't just want to kill Jesus, but they also wanted to kill Lazarus, who was raised from the dead. Because every time they saw Lazarus, they saw Jesus. Is there a Lazarus in the house today? Every time they see you, they ought to see Jesus. And it ought to remind them that he died. Didn't he die? Early on Sunday morning. He got up with all power in his hand. Is there anybody in here this morning? Do you know Jesus? Have you tried Jesus? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? I know the Lord is all right. I know he's all right. Find you a partner. 
find you a believer right now. Find you a praise partner right now. And I want you to preach to them like I'm going to preach to you. Find you somebody that you can preach to. Grab somebody. Tell them right now, just like I said, I want you to say this to them. God has been good to me. They came to Jesus to see Jesus. And not only did they come to see Jesus, but they also came to see Lazarus, who Jesus raised from the dead. And every time people come to church, they ought to see who raised the dead. They ought to see the one who raised the dead. And that Jesus was that one. But not only are they ought to see the one who raised the dead, but they ought to see the one who could have been dead, and that's me. Did he raise you? Did he raise you? I said, did he raise you? Woo! I said, did he raise you? Did he raise you? Then come on, come on, and shout a minute. Shout just one more time, because he lives. I can see tomorrow because he lives. Because he lives. Because he lives. I know what my God can do. Come on and bless his name. Come on and bless the name of Jesus. When I think of the goodness of Jesus at all. He's done for me. My soul shouts hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. out hallelujah and I thank God for saving me when I think about all his goodness and all he's done for me well, my soul cries out, hallelujah, and I thank God, I thank God, I thank 
have to do is think about God and all he's done for you. Your soul ought to cry out hallelujah. I know we go through things in life. I know we've done things. We've said things that we should not have said. I know sometimes we scandalize names and people and places and things. But you know what? God has been so good to us that, that we we deserve better. We deserve better because God is God all by himself. And when you think about what God's done for you, how he's done it for you, and you didn't even deserve it, you ought to cry out hallelujah every time because God is so good. He didn't have to do it, but he did. He didn't have to go to that cross Stretch his hands wide. Put his head in the locks of his shoulders and die for your sin, your sin, your sin, your, my sin. But he did because he loved us so much. I thank God for making a way out of no way. I thank God for saving my sin lost. So I thank God that he didn't give up on me. And that's why I can come to this table right now because I remember what my Jesus did for me. Oh, no, I ain't been perfect. I've not crossed every T. I've not crossed every I, dotted every I. But I know that my God, your God, our God, loves us with a vehement love, a love that you can't even describe. Our God loved us so much that he sent the very best he had. Moses couldn't do it. Huh? Abraham couldn't do it. Elijah couldn't do it. Joseph couldn't do it. Huh? Job couldn't do it. 400 years went by. The dove flew it didn't land. The love flew back and he landed on a man named Jesus. Jesus can do it all. And he saved us all from our own sin. And so, yes, we owe him something. We owe him our praise. We owe him our worship. We are indebted to Christ Jesus till the day we die. So, yes, that's why I urge you to praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because he's been good. He's been good to us. Now the time we come to sit at this table, I feel like preaching again right now. I do. I really do. I feel like preaching another word right now. But I'm going to be obedient to the word of God. And I know it's time for us to go through this, to this Lord's Supper table this morning. And the Bible says, and when the hour was come, he sat down and the apostles with him. And he said unto them. With desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I shall not eat it until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he received a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I shall not drink henceforth of the truth of the tree and the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread in like manner and he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave to them saying, this is my body which is given to you. This do in remembrance of me. And, 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 and the cup like manner after supper said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Even that which is poured out for you. He said, but behold, 
There is one who is sitting with us right now, sitting at the table, who's going to betray me. He said, but I already know that. And I've already prepared the way. So here they are, sitting at the table. Jesus takes the loaf. and He breaks the loaf and says, this represents my body. This is what has been said throughout the generation that my body should never be broken, not a bone on my body. But this bread represents my brokenness. This is the bread that came down out of heaven. Not as the fathers ate and died, but he that eats this bread shall live forever. Let us take and eat this bread. And in like mind on that same night, he took a cup and he poured into that cup. And he said, this represents my shed blood on the cross. And he says, and according to the law, I may almost say all things are cleansed with blood. And apart from shedding of blood, there is no remission for your sin. But if you walk in the light, and he is that light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us. From all our sin, let us drink. But as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Amen and amen. I'm going to sing after I do the prayer, Sister uh, Miller. And then we'll dismiss after that. So we have our prayer list this morning that we will go over. But let us bow our heads in prayer. There are so many things going on right now in this world. And so many things the devil is tricking us into. And, and he can make it sound like it's from God. But saints of God, be careful. Be careful. Satan is so much wiser than you are. He know all the tricks of the trade, and he can make it sound so real to you. I'll just ask you, please, please be careful. You cannot take him on by yourself. You need Jesus. Father and loving God, I thank you for hearing our prayer. I thank you, God, for feeding us with your word. And encouraging us in your service today. Lord, I ask that you take each and every one of us in this service today. Take us, mold us, use us, and use us for your service. Love and to serve you and serve other people, Father God, in the power of your spirit. It's not by might. It's not by but it's by your spirit, Lord, eternal God and Father, for whose power uh, we are created and whose love we are redeemed and by whom joy that sustain us, guide us, God, strengthen us in your spirit that we may give ourselves to you and for your service and live this day in love to one another and to you because the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So free us up right now, God, to do the things that are pleasing in your sight. Dear Lord, may we realize afresh today what your death and resurrection mean to us, forgiveness and freedom and the ability to walk with you through this fallen world, this eternal. God, may we always find satisfaction in you and your willingness to offer yourself to us. Jesus, thank you for choosing us. Thank you for choosing a life on this earth with us for teaching us how to live lives that honor God but also showing us how we are going to be challenged in this world but father there's no challenge that you can't overcome there's no sorrow father God that you don't know about all that we find ourselves going through right now if we just call on the name of Jesus, 
There's power in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that when the name of Jesus is called, you don't have to say anything else, but just say Jesus. When somebody's talking about you, say Jesus. When somebody don't, you don't feel they love you anymore, say Jesus. Whenever you find a pain wrapped up in your body, say Jesus. Whatever the situation is right now, I need you to say Jesus. Because Jesus is our healer. Jesus is our redeemer. Jesus is everything that we need. So God, I surrender. I surrender my life to you. You can have it all. Every thought, every action, every behavior, every desire, I want you to be glorified through me. So here I am. Here I am, Lord. Take me and use me and send me and change me and clean me and transform me and love me and love others through me. Father, we pray for Dorothy Gilbert and Lenora Reed and Leroy Coverston and James Stewart and Elijah Walker Jackson and Teresa Rankin and Brian Glaspie family and brother of Kiki Scott. We pray for Kim Reed. We pray for Lynn Galloway Dobbins. We pray for the Nelson family. We pray for Heather Clanton, special deeds and educators, all of those. We pray for God. And those names that we did not call out Search our heart right now and let it be known that these people have heard from God today. They heard from Jesus today. And, and so Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you go wherever you need to go. Send your precious spirit right now in the homes, the, the schools, the, the highways, the byways, the alleys, the jails, the hospitals, the convalescents, wherever you need to go, God, I need you to go right now. This is an urgent time, and we in an urgent need for a, a God who is always on time. And we need you right now, God, to see about your people. See about them in a mighty way. Hear their prayer. Hear their cry, Father God. And let them know everything's going to be all right. And Father, I ask this prayer right now. I ask that you find those who have some hard hearts. Some envious hearts right now. Some hearts that are tore up right now. Some hearts that are thinking some bad things right now. So some bad feelings, some bad emotions. Whatever it is they're harboring in their hearts right now, God. I need you to go in right now with the precious anointing of your Holy Spirit and remove whatever it is, Father God, out of their hearts that they may find joy. Because this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Forget all this saying about I'm happy. No, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands, that's all right. But you got to have some joy on the inside of you. It's okay to be happy. But if you don't have joy, you're in a messed up situation. Because when everything else goes wrong, you better know you can call on God and God got some joy waiting in, on the shelf just for you with your name on it. And that's why the songwriter said this joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world cannot take it away. And when you can't find anything else to praise and thank God for, you ought to at least be able to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
I know it was the blood. Yes, I know it was the blood. Yes, I know it was the blood for me. Well, one day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Well, they pierced him in the side. Well, they pierced him in the side. Well, they pierced him in the side. Jesus died upon the cross, and I know it was the blood for me. the blood. Let us stand for the benediction. Ushers, ushers, if you don't mind coming forth. Do the best you can with what you have where you are. Do the best you can. Let us bow our heads for the benediction. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee. The Lord be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you false before his presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forevermore. May the blessed peace of God. May it rest, rule, and abide with you until we meet again. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let everybody say, Amen. Amen.